Who in their right mind would want an abandoned amusement park on a godforsaken island in the Atlantic? Aside from Nathaniel Winter, of course. Yeah, that Nathaniel Winter. Millionaire. Mogul. Also, as it turns out, theme park tycoon. Workers falling to their deaths. Equipment malfunctioning as soon as it was turned on. A roller coaster derailed, killing a family of three. A ten-year-old kid was found, dismembered, behind the cotton candy stand. An employee in a chipmunk costume went berserk, stabbing two teenagers in the eye. You can say a lot about Nathaniel Winter, but he never made a bad investment or a rash decision. So why in God's name did he build this park? I can't imagine. Hello everyone, happy Monday, and welcome back to our exploration of the secret world intellectual property. I hope you had a pleasant weekend, and if not, let's see what trouble we can get into in the park. The park is a narrative experience best played in a dark room wearing headphones. It deals with subject matter that may be disturbing to some players. During the course of play, the park may manipulate graphics, audio, control settings, and your sanity. This is perfectly normal and should not be any cause for alarm or psychiatry. Joke's on you, Funcom. I'm already seeing a psychiatrist. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. We'll go and ask information. As you can see, this takes place at Atlantic Island Park, which we explored in the last episode in the Secret World... Uh, Secret World Legends, not the Secret World anymore. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. Hmm. Are there subtitles? There are subtitles. You're so welcome. And by you're so welcome, I mean I'm so welcome because sometimes it's a little difficult to uh, understand what's going on in the heat of the moment. I read a lot better than I process auditory information. Mm. Oh, I have a shadow. And a body! Hey! Coming up in the world. Hmm. This area sure is pretty, isn't it? I am glad they do these little spin-off games because it is kind of fun to explore the setting outside of the narrative of the bees that we are in the main game. Although, a lot of me is going, I should be looking for lore right now. I know. Press, okay, to interact with objects in the world. Callum was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. A tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who use their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all those who follow after. Dedicated this first day of May, 1977, James B. Longley. Hmm. Oh. Okay, so I can bring up a plain text of things. Good to know. I haven't played this in a while, so while I remember the gist of it, I'm... Oh, hello. What? Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Thanks, I guess? What was that freak out? You just gonna sit there, buddy boy? Now there is one thing that you will notice in all of the games in this intellectual property, and it's that you have to pay attention to 
the surroundings. They do a lot of environmental storytelling and they tend to do it very well. Press, okay. So we can shout for Calum to give us visual clues. Ah, yes, shouting at your children. The best clue giving you can do. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. This way, Mommy. You. You look kind of creepy even before you became the boogeyman, and I... Or maybe that's just, you know, my knowledge from the game. Oh, there There's he is! There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employees, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. No, thank you. Oh, I just heard the boogeyman. I just heard him laugh, I think. That was the world's longest escalator ride. I hate getting on escalators. I've seen them eat people's feet at my old job. Mm -mm, no, thank you. Oh, God. The park. What happened here? A shift to toggle. Okay, run as a toggle. Here's the map. It's easy to get lost here. So we're here near Shideshow Alley. There's the House of Horrors, Tunnel of Tells. Okay, some of this isn't in the the proper game, but I'm not gonna complain. Callum? What's that? Hello? You can't catch oh. Me. Yes, I can, you awful little thing. Stop, Callum! Oh my god. Oh my god, if this was my kid, you'd be grounded for like a million years. Oh, excuse you. Hello. Harry Killian is Satan's whore. Pleasant. Pleasant. Candy house. Mmm. <gasps> Sorry, I, we keep hearing ra like birds and crows and rats, and in this game setting, this these usually signify revenants. Stop, Callum! Come on, mommy. I think this belongs to Callum. I is his shoe here, but not the rest of him. It would be so unpleasant to run around in bare feet on this. I'm sorry. Being where I am in the world, my first thought is, do you want ringworm? Because this is how you get ringworm. What's this? Chad the chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Ah. Chad the chipmunk welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. Chad can be seen in daily ice sculpting shows in the following locations. 11 a.m. Sideshow Alley, 1 p.m. The Octatron, 3 p.m. Park Entrance, Graffiti. Chad the chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead-end job. Chad will die a useless slob. People are so mean here. <laughs> oh. He's kind of, like, look. With the obvious blood spatter aside, he's a very cute mascot, don't you think? Callum! Over here! What's this? Purchase the land on Solomon Island for pittance, I might add. Whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals. Man, that noise in the background could not. Whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals, just the mention of his name had people slamming doors and locking shutters from the moment I arrived on the island. 
My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land, Mr. Winter, but the soil here is bitter with the curse carried from the old country. Old Man Henderson, he did terrible, dark things. The land remembers, sir. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I have a great vision for this place, and the will to see that vision through to the very end. Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect, and I cannot imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. Okay. That from there? Don't whisper demonic things at me, sir. I am too old for this. Okay. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Catch me, Mommy. Oh, don't say that to Mommy. Children, have some... Was that him? That was his laugh. Screw you. Where are you? You were here at the Tunnel of Tells. Oh. Callum, stay where you are. Oh, there he goes. He's on the boat for some reason. Don't be on the boat. How did you even get on there, kid? Hi, excuse me. I I I need to catch my son and Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, limited food. Aren't you supposed to be at Lover's Lake? What in the world is happening? Hmm. The world's spookiest boat ride. Is this really supposed to be an attraction for children? Because why? This is for teenagers to make out, Near right? Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or suck. Oh god, okay. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife. I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. Okay. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, Jesus the Christ! Wait a while. Hi. They follow the trail back to their parents' house. Okay. Hi, Chad. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. It's making in the morning, noise. their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. The heck? What are we freaking out about? What are we freaking Hansel out about? Broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, 
the children wandered in the forest for three days. Okay. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. What was that? Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She started what are we freaking out about? What are we freaking out about? And put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool! The old witch said, yes. the opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. Gruesome. Ugh. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. It's gruesome. Why? Why are... Okay. So are we Gretel or are we the witch in this scenario? I think we're Gretel. Nope, you turned your head right back around. Look the other way. Look away. Do I look impressed? No. Ark is messing with us super hard, huh? All right. Let me out. Now, realistically, wouldn't it have been better just to wait for Callum's boat to come around and then grab him and stomp him back to the lost and found to get his teddy bear and go home? Yes. Very technically, yes. See, he looks so much better when he's not looking at me. We saw Chad the Chipmunk, which was horrifying, so there might be- I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. 
I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Wait, Callum! Um, excuse me? Where'd you go? Hello? Didn't we come this way? Stop! Kill him! Okay, <laughs> it sounds like we're going this way. Yeah, this is this the way we came? Come to mommy, Callum! What? Oh, he's gone! That's awful! Oh my god! Okay! Serial Hello? killer on the loose. Callum? <laughs> okay. Where are we going now? Hi. Where are you? Another accident. This place. Oh, that looks... Okay, what kind of accident... What accident would leave that blood spatter? Hello? Why are we breathing hard again? Oh. Oh. Okay. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the banned writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Hender Henderson himself chose to use negative. I'm getting... Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon, I will know if this has all been for nothing. Okay, so maybe we didn't set out to be the boogeyman. I see you. Also, uh... That poor teddy bear. Chad's probably been by. So... I guess Nathaniel Winter didn't set out to cause these issues. It's just something that happened because Archie Henderson did this before him. But instead of using positive emotions, he used negative emotions. Excuse you. Stay where you are. <laughs> you could be less rude about this entire process. I am just saying. At this point, I think our kid's already dead, and we are chasing his ghost, because no child is this... You. I remember you. You sent zombies after me, and then killed them, which was fantastic. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Ugh. These water sounds. The amnesia water monster just ruined water in video games for me forever, to be honest with you. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It'd make me dizzy. Examine report. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Hey, it's Sheriff Bannerman and Norma Creek. Eyewitness report, Atlantic Island Park incident. Officer on duty, Sheriff F. Bannerman. Witness name, Creed, Norma. Statement. We were waiting for our turn on the ride, Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making a nice carbon while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. 
Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice, and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion, but as more and more ice fell away. When you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of that block of ice, but the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions, something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster, like you were prey and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit and then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick and the blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. Thanks, Norma. That'll haunt me in my nightmares. Hi. Go away, please. Thank you. Is there any other lore? No? Where are we going? Uh, okay, like, seriously. What is that supposed to be? What are you supposed to be? Why? Like, who thought that was a great idea? Why isn't this a friendly octopus? Why is this some kind of horrible monster? Callum, stay where you are! Yeah, there wasn't water around him in the game either. Okay. Uh. Ride Octatron. No. Okay, we have to stop it first, otherwise we can't ride it, right? But who's gonna turn it on for us? Oh my god. Okay. I'm- alright, sure, ride the Octatron. I don't know why we're doing that, let's do it. Hello? Ah, it is you! Hello! I saw you, Boogeyman. Ah. I could never write these things in real life. They always made me sick. Mmm, too fast. Too fast. Nathaniel Winter, you're an asshole. I would be- Oh god, hi! Have you seen a dentist lately? So how did that, uh, eating only good emotions go for you, buddy? I mean, we know the answer's not well, we've done your quest line in the game, but, uh... You know what? Deserved. Oh, examine Polaroid. Oh, I remember this. What a happy family. Me and Callum. Yeah, you you two look... Oh, wait, no, wait, no, come back. He's there, see him? So he was stalking them... So he was stalking them before they ever even, like... I can't flip it around. So he was stalking them before they ever even, like, had this happen. So he's been watching us for a while. Okay. So we know that they, we, we already weren't like the happiest kid. I'm not seeing any other, uh... Come on, sweetie. Ah. So we already know that Callum and Lorraine are an impoverished family and it's caused them hardship, which has probably strained the relationship. Hi, let me read this, thank you. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete. I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money. But no matter how much money talks, it can't conjure up missing plans from thin air. I tried contacting the organization who sold me these plans and they are stonewalling me. Every contact that I had, every meeting place that I have had watched are swept bare. I have a sinking feeling that I have been swindled. We've gone ahead with what we could find in the plans regardless, the harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. I'll probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day we open the park. That would 
they will be rides after all. I'm gonna keep doing that this entire time, and I apologize in advance. Okay, so that's good old Natty Winner, uh, talking about his son Nathaniel. Callum! Where did you go? <laughs> so he eats positive emotions. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing, and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. They shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. You... Okay, that, Lorraine, that's just postpartum. That's actually really normal. That's... A, a lot of women go through that. That doesn't make you a bad mother. That That is... Hello? That That is a thing that happens, and there are resources for it. Which I'm guessing you didn't have, because this looks like it's, you know, several decades ago. I don't trust this. I, we're gonna get jump scared. This is, mm, yeah, okay. Yep, see? Hello? I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of the season here really drags. There aren't many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their day standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I am starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk, child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. Then I saw him at Susie's diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, to the park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him pu puking up in a gutter outside Sidecoil Station, because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me. And he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me. Sizing me up. Eye-fucking me. Whatever he was doing. Ugh. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that suit, chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Hinman. Okay. Hi, Laura, I guess. Okay. Alright. We were expecting that. It's fine. We're fine. Deep breaths, Lorraine. Come on. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay, so we have Chad the Chipmunk, I mean Steve, who killed some kids. We did hear about that in the, the last episode. We have Lorraine, who has postpartum depression and suffers from that while trying to raise her son in poverty. No mention of a dad, so I'm guessing that this is single motherhood, which is... Whew, that's, that's a lot going on for one lady several decades ago when in a small town that probably didn't look kindly on that sort of thing. What are you supposed to be? Okay, that's... Are you a reference to Japan? Are you a kappa? Because look, that looks like a Tori gate, kind of. I mean, it's not red, but that's what it reminds me of. It's very out of place here in, you know, Lovecraft country. Anyway, and then we have Nathan uh, Nathaniel Winter, who built this theme park to harvest positive emotions for some reason. Who knows why? Oh, it's the bumper cars. Okay, I do love the bumper cars. 
Whiplash Simulator. Who doesn't love Constant that? crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Okay, so maybe we're in the 90s? Hi. Hmm. Callum, come back here right now! Hello? What's this? Hello? No. Examine device. Okay. So it seems like she had postpartum depression and she did seek out help. They did electroshock therapy and it didn't go well for her. Hello? Don't whisper that at me. For the love of God, child. More and more of the story unraveling. She did seek out help. Or was forced into help, maybe? Hello? Is there anyone in here? No? It's just here? Okay. Hello? Callum, where are you? I'm trying. You're being awful. Hello? Oh, this one's on! Okay, what are you doing? Oh, do we get to play in the bumper cars? I would like to play in the bumper cars. Examine accident report. What? Accident report. Francis Dufresne. Oh, like Danny Dufresne. Time and date of the accident incident. October 25th, 1976, job title and departments, laborers working on the crane, supervisor lead person, lead person, Richard Stapleton, witnesses, Lord's Creed, Michael, oh, so one of the creeds, Michael Edgeworth. Be brief description of the accident or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load of the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe any injuries caused. Francis was killed. Did the injured employee see a doctor? Yes. If yes, did you file an employer's portion of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Supervisor's comments. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with some urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident? Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Have the safe, unsafe conditions been corrected? No. Unlegible signature. 25th October 1976. The local laborers are become are uh, the local laborers are very superstitious and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise the spirits. I don't think that's going to help. I don't think it's gonna help because it didn't help with. Oh. Hi. Um, I can't move. I can't move. Oh god. Well, that's certainly one way to do pathfinding. All right. Guess we're going this way. Callum. Callum. Baby crying. Mommy is coming, Callum. Miss anything? No. Okay. I guess that's Callum we're hearing after his birth. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. 
judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead, my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. Struggling mother. All right. Oh, Lorraine, you had it rough. Hello? Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they are locals, and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what Old Man Henderson used to do here. They grew up with those tells. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over all of the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies, and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here makes my skin crawl. I called a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. It turns out they do, and it turns out that Old Man Henderson had some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. That would be the Illuminati. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. I'm going to do this every time. I'm so sorry. It's not the most intuitive thing for me. And this sounds less like a ferris wheel and more like the thrum of a giant engine. Hello? <gasps> Are we going to ride the ferris wheel? Remember, that's how you got to the shadow realm in the other game. run. Where are you, Calum? Ah, yep. Okay, up there. Baby crying again. We don't need the baby crying. Oh, hello. So they are going to close this place down. Doesn't surprise me. Okay, so we are in the 80s. But she was complaining about the 80s music. Whatever. State Bureau of Fair Rides Inspection, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Okay, this is September 22nd, 1980, unsafe, close the park. Inspectors connect. After touring the park, riding the rides, and viewing the, start, uh, the startling number of incidents suffered here in the park, it is this inspector's opinion that Atlantic Island Park should be shut down until Nathaniel Winter complies with all safety regulations. While I understand that there is a sensitive political relationship between Mr. Min Winter and the Senator, I nevertheless suggest that such political considerations be set aside in condemning Atlantic Island Park. The rides, at first glance, appear well, well constructed and maintained, but the sheer number of incidents in the park during the last few years and during construction lead me to believe that there is something wrong at the base level of construction and we should close the park and fully investigate these flaws. To wit, here is a partial list of the fatalities in the park since opening only two years ago. Family of three killed with a, when a rope. Family of three killed when a roller coaster cart derailed. Fourteen separate incidents of broken bones and crushed ribs while riding the Octatron. Three suicides from the top of the Ferris wheel. A child seriously injured on the escalator. I told you you cannot trust those things. Over a dozen children reported missing in the House of Horrors since its construction. One report of drowning in the tunnel of Tells. The sheer volume of the incidents means that means that it is me that it is me strongest recommendation that Atlantic Island Park be closed immediately. Signed David Woolseth. It's my down there, there's some typos. It's it's done correctly here. Okay. Sure, it's easy. Slow down. I would like to ride the ride, please. Let me ride you. Yes. Oh, there are little suns. I don't know if I realized that before. Okay. Oh, that's not safe. There's just no door. That's really unsafe, actually. There's a door over there. Hey, 
call out. We're just, we're riding a ride. What's that over there? Hello? What are you? You're a rock? A seriously floating rock, sure. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Ma ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Okay, it kind of seems like old Natty Winter's been after Lorraine for a while. Uh, killed her husband. Is putting her through all of this. Wait, did he die on the Ferris wheel? We are- Hi. Hello. I'm even gladder I- Gladder. I'm even happier I punched you in the face now. Jesus. Poor Lorraine. She's been through it. Did you leave anything for me? No, you just stood there to be a jerk. Okay. You know, at least he's letting me ride the rides and process all of this trauma. Okay, we're going this way. Follow the trail, right, Callum? Oh, there's one of the... Is one missing? Yeah, right there. That one's missing. Okay. Hmm. Take roller coaster ticket. Oh, hello? No, thank you. That was like two eyes staring at me. No, thank you. There's something back here that we could have uh, gotten. Is it too late now? Okay. This whole place is just falling apart. I don't even think it was this ran down when we were there in the Secret World. Or Secret World Legends, I mean. Listen, it was a secret world for a long time. That's what I'm probably always going to call it. A lot of people it. idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. My angel likes to read. And little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people. You give up nine months of your life carrying them. You traumatize yourself giving birth to them. And then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping up piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> we all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Yeah, that's the unprocessed trauma that you're you're going through. That that's that that's you've been through the ringer and it's uh coming out with your kid there, Lorraine. You, you gotta get a handle on that. Can't take it out on your kid. It's not their fault. You can take it out on Nathaniel Winter. That, that is always a um, ethically correct choice, is to take it out on Nathaniel Winter. He might have been the one who intentionally killed your husband, actually. I, I believe that is some of the implication here. Stay where you are! Oh, okay, this way. Oh, green means go. I always wanted to ride this one. 
Never got around to do it before. What's with the sting? Is Chad lurking somewhere? Oh, okay, we're gonna do this again. All right, ride the roller coaster. What do you want? We need to talk about Callum. What do you mean? What have you done to him? Oh god, he's right behind us. I, okay. That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. The witch has him now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. We were always alone? Whoa. Hello? Hospital doors? Uh, I'll have to go back and see what that said. legends the implications that we get from the lore and the missions is that nathaniel winters was intentionally the boogeyman and feeding off of children here it seems to start backing that up a little bit and that he made this park to harvest the energy of joy and laughter except that's i'm not playing anymore Callum. except that's not what happened so it's Okay, so let's parse this out for a second. Old Man Henderson, a long time ago, did about the same thing, but he did it with negative energy and it tainted the land. Then you have Nathaniel Winter, who also made a energy harvesting machine, but he does it to harvest good emotions. And so he's like, well, nothing bad can happen because, you know, we're idiots. Um, but something bad does happen, perhaps because of the taint of whatever Old Man Henderson did, or just the nature of your sucking energy out of children, what is wrong with you? So it turned him into the boogeyman. And it seemed for, at least in Secret World Legends, that Nathaniel Winter was definitely part and parcel with the park. But here he's implying that he isn't. He doesn't actually want to do anything with K Callum and Lorraine. And that their misery is the antithesis of what he's after. So is that true or is he messing with us? It works. The calculations and adjustments worked. The transport and storage mechanisms seem to be flawless. What a wonderful day. If only these people knew what they were fueling. And so what if a few people leave the park at the end of the day feeling dour? So what if the children are more scared than excited on the roller coaster? This could be the doorway to immortality. Ah. And such doorways only open only to those who will have the will to find the key. Okay. So he was trying to become immortal. And he started, you see the slippery slope starting. All right, so you're just fucking with us. You definitely did something to Lorraine and Callum. Also, she's not honorably alone. Clearly something was trying to talk to her on the roller coaster. And I'm right here. And this game is nothing if not Callum? aware of the Callum? fourth wall. 
game has always been and will always be. Well, it's intellectual property. It's always been and will always be. Flashlight. awaits. Okay. That was more ominous than I it needed to be. I can help you, Callum. the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs? Excuse you? Callum has bruises on his arms. Finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him. Demanded, really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. Doesn't dare talk. He's been changing, too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. But they are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can't save him. There will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. This isn't a game, Callum! Don't let the witch put me in the oven. Okay, so... I understand that sounds a lot like Lorraine is abusing Callum and she's not aware of it, but because we've played Secret World, we understand that there is something inherently wrong with the island and she actually might be perfectly a saint. What are you saying? Oh, that's saying something. Anyway, we know that there is messed up stuff on this island, and she may not be... It may not be what it first appears, right? Like, it sounds, if you've never played the game, like she's abusing Callum in her sleep or something she doesn't remember, and then he's responding. But it does sound to, to me like maybe he's... Something with the dreamers? She might be talking about the filth affecting Callum. I know we haven't quite gotten to the dreamers yet in our playthrough, but believe me, she may not be as um, unhinged as that sounded. Ugh, no thank you, clowns. Oh. Uh, hello? Do not put baby in a cage. Put your balls in our mouth to- <laughs> You too, please don't. Uh, please don't take this down. I, it, 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 it's a carnival game. The teddy bears are also pretty significant. Isn't that... For anyone familiar with the Secret World uh, intellectual property, isn't that Emma's teddy bear? Anyway, the let's... The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Pot and candy corpse leaves sour taste in park goer's mouth. You waited your whole life to write that. Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by the discovery of a dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local authorities, the corpse has yet to be identified. However, they have confirmed that the remains appear to be those of a child. The corpse was discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy who noticed a pair of ravens tucking at something just out of sight behind the shack. Nathaniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It is a true tragedy when something... I'm going to say list? That shouldn't... Like this, I'm assuming. That something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. The staff of Atlantic Island Park offer their condolences to the family and friends of the victims and will cooperate fully with authorities to help bring this case to rest. The Solomon Chronicle will provide daily updates of this on the story going forward. Okay. Uh, hello? That's not my footsteps. Who's there? Hello? 
Pickled punks. Things are about to get just a little bit weird. Um, yeah, that is kind of weird. The management is not responsible for diseases contracted via the kissing <laughs> Okay, sure. Oh, mmm. Mermaid? I guess we have to go back here. Hello? Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Alright. Oh, and there's a clown. Fantastic. Poor bastard. Who did this to him? Probably Chad. I mean, Steve. Cal Jesus! Fuck you, Steve. Oh, Steve, go to hell. Steve, go to hell challenge. Here's someone else walking around. It's not me. Real mermaid. Okay, that's still locked. Can't go there. Whack a jack. Hey, we did whack a jack. I don't like all these noises. Hello? You're a little conspicuously placed. Take pills. <laughs> These are mine. Zoloft. I have friends on Zoloft. They're fine. Your mother? <sighs> Only dead fish follow the stream. <sighs> some kids laugh and some kids cry, but mostly children simply die. All that you love will be carried away. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Reagan 80. Ugh, dude. Don't believe anything they tell you. Fear the boogeyman. Stop picking your nose then. Destroy reality. Banner is a fat pig, but his daughter is hot. Fuck gravity. I can taste your dreams. Not safe, the League. So the League of Monster Slayers is here. Okay. Your mother? What about our mother? Oh. You know, I gotta say, uh, my pills never did that to me. Hello? Sir? Okay, we, we can't go this way then. Alright. I don't want to go that way. Oh! Okay, wait. <laughs> that was fun. Me. Callum, sweetie. What the hell? Ew. Hello. That changed? I can't. Future Times by Laurel and Howdy. Belly Button is the signature of your personal creator. I believe her name was Mama. Every 17th child is a magnet for sinfulness, made omniscient by broken fires in the coastal strain. We don't believe the earth belongs to battered goats and shamrock afterbirth. Only the truly naked friends of righteous indignation are severed by war-crossed cleavages and trust. Exercise and trust exercise arrhythmia. Beaumont will come to the island bearing the talisman, and he will shatter the sills that bind the orthodoxy of corruption. Only then will priests shoot, sluts reveal, housewives pontificate, and delayed messiahs make axles for the res rescue of Tango and Cash. Sweet the temptress who grips the shaft, twists the shaft, absconding with third age fire into fourth age darkness, while gods lie writhing on the shattered face of the earth. 
Gaia has sweetness and grace, but her days are numbered, and heavy-fisted hives break before frozen wills and calli calligraphic actresses in pencil and paper pornography. The all-seeing eye will provide decade-long updates on the story going forward. Okay, so this is all relating back to the MMO. There's Beaumont. There's Cassie. There's Tango and Cash. There's uh, the priest at the church. There's the... What do you call her? The fortune teller. There's Norma Creed. Is this the... Is this the buzzing talking to Lorraine? Did Lorraine have precognition? Is that part of why the park affected her more heavily than it did maybe others? Oh, his teddy bear. Okay, so maybe part of Lorraine's problem is she had precognition or she already had a weird connection to the buzzing. And the park just kind of messed with that a lot. Can I? Oh, it's open. I can leave. Okay, let's get out of here before this filter gives me a bigger headache than it already has. Oh, honey, Lorraine. Oh, hello. Oh, and now they're all honeycombs. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Red, blue, and green honeycombs. I see you. The park is a collage of contradictions all of its own. Millions of people die every year in car crashes. And the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action. Here the children scream with joy. In the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. And what secrets lie beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I always despised her toothy grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. I think Callum is waiting for me. Inside. That would explain some of why she's talking like this, if she's already got something like the buzzing or precognition messing with her head. She might be like the prophet we saw at the beginning as Templar. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now if you've only watched my playthrough. Um, but we will be seeing Carrie Killian in a future episode. Alright. I guess. Let's go. We have a flashlight. Can we turn the flashlight on, please? Oh. Okay. Sure. Yep. Oh, this flashlight does not help. Okay. I did like fun houses and haunted houses as a kid. I guess that doesn't surprise anyone that I liked haunted houses. Read page. Done. Atlantic Island Park has closed its gates. A jeering throng of townsfolk gathered as we hung the heavy iron padlock on the gates small-minded fools scared of what they don't understand my machines lie silent and dejected but i am not beaten i have sent my wife and son back to boston and i have retreated here to the house of horrors i must think oh my god we're gonna see the real chat here aren't we what is what is this hello is that the mine what are you? It looks like the mine. Ugh. 
No, thank you. No, thank you. Palum. Oh, we have a reflection. I bet we're going to get jump scared by that at some point. Yeah, get your laugh in. Get your laugh in. Okay. Yeah, mm hmm. You're so scary. That's going to happen a lot. We're just all going to have to deal with that now. Okay. So we're. We saw Callum run by. Saw Callum run by. Just got to get to him. to Callum, everything's fine. Get to Callum, everything's fine. Werewolf, hello, is for me, is not for me. Uh, book is A History of Solomon Island. We can't read this, though that seems like it's important. Okay. Always thought it'd be kind of nice if we saw, like, one of the legends, or... <laughs> I saw that. <gasps> Fuck you, Steve. No one's impressed. No one's impressed by you, Steve. Least of all me. We have a generator. Oh, there he is. Where are you? There's your shadow, but where are you? Sir, excuse me, I need you to quit being creepy for like no reason. Come out here so I can whack you with this flashlight. Do not jump scare me. Don't do it. Don't do it. What did I say about jump scaring me? What did I say about it? There might be information that way. We're gonna go this way. Excuse me. Do not jump scare me. Don't do it. The radio. Don't jump scare me. History of Solomon Island again. Boom. Why did that scare me? That was just a light turning on. Okay. Wanna see something through here? No. What was the point of that then? Hello? Oh! Incidents, and I cannot dismiss them as random chance. The park works, but something is interfering with its intended function. It's as though the very air in this place is corrupting the power even as I collect it. A few casualties here and there are acceptable, but when employees go on stabbing rampages, it draws attention. I'd rather not have the boys in blue, either kind, investigating this place too closely. It's a shame about Steve. I rather liked him. Okay, yeah, we are fully evil McStevenson by this point. Uh... <gasps> what was that? Why? Why are you like this? Oh, Templar chairs. So by this point, he's fully gone over to the dark side. So it is a little tragic for him. He didn't start out that way. He just started out, you know, a greedy asshole, but not an evil one, necessarily. And whatever's wrong... Zombie! Whatever's wrong with this... Oh, suck a dick. Uh, whatever is wrong with him, uh, wrong with this place, did him in by corrupting what he was doing. Even more than it already was. Like, it was probably pretty evil to begin with. What is that? Bruh. Alright. 
Hmm, should I go through the creepy doorway, guys, that just opened for me on its own? One little gun went out one day. That's on this table. Just random books. No secrets. Hi, I would like to go in, please. Thank you. Oh, good. Descending. That's always a great thing to do in a horror game. A. Okay. Is that me and Caleb? Nightmare Circus by Fair and Calm. Fun calm. Very cute. Very cute. A circus burns to the ground on opening night, killing dozens. The owner is put to a death by an enraged mob of townsfolk just as he shouts out a curse. Now Raven, a dark-souled wanderer, comes to the ruins at dusk in search of her, his missing mother. Let the show begin. Oh, QBL. That'll be important later. Okay. What else is there? A plant. Is that a ficus? Maybe. After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. Home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone deep coldness that never went away. I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Don, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum and did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now, lost and afraid. Things never got any better. Okay, so the bread comes are her pills. Dunwich Power Company. Disconnect notice. Oh, boy. Okay, so her power got shut off. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up shutting off someone's power in Maine. You know, where people freeze to death. Shocking true story, Hunger, the true story of the Donners. Famine Press, cute. On April 16th, 1846, a group of covered wagons began the 2,500 mile journey to California. Just eight months later, they found themselves stranded in the Sierra Nevada mountains with very little to bite or sup. Hmm, we've seen that phrase before in this game. It is to become one of the greatest tragedies of westward migration that the world had ever seen. Hmm? I don't know. I think everything that they did to, like, m the whole Manifest Destiny thing was actually really tragic. Now our panel of Donner experts have uncovered compelling evidence that the families were forced to resort to cannibalism in order to survive that terrible winter. In this never-before-seen expose, read about how the Donner children were forced to eat their brothers and sisters in order to survive. All here in the pages of the shocking true story. Cannibalism comes up a lot, actually, in Secret World. It's a recurring theme. There's Callum and Lorraine going to their house, I guess. Must be Callum's bed. Okay, that's his ball cap. There he is at the dentist. The Withering, Susan Anscombe. With this novel, Susan Anscombe cements her place as one of the most important science fiction writers of a generation, The Wilting. A solar flare has struck the Earth. Millions of people are uprooted from their homes. A young meteorologist searches desperately for a way to stop global overheating. An exotic dancer named Chance O'Hara is the key to saving the world again. Dynamic, exciting, bombastic. Everything we've come to expect from an Anscombe novel. Chance O'Hara is back, and you better believe that she's bigger, better, and bolder than ever. Sounds a lot like...
really hard to do uh, sun themes without thinking of some of the stuff that's going to come up in the future. Radio's on. Rubik's Cube. Okay. Can't do anything with that. Mom and me in a car. So these are a bunch of happy pictures. I love you from Callum. Okay. So there were good times. There were good times. It wasn't all just fucking terrible. Milk, cheese, bread, butter, corn, potatoes, apples, fish sticks. Remember, drop off Callum, electricity bill, fix faucet. Yeah, there's the faucet. Salmon wrench. Okay, we saw that wrench earlier too. Can we not fix the faucet while we're here? Are we not supposed to do that? Alright. I already hate that noise. Oh my god, I hate that noise. Can't go in there. Okay, not the fullest fridge, but there is food. Oh my goodness. Oh, I could do without the TV, thanks. Uh, Dunwich Emergency Services. Miss Maylard. As we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you fully recovered from your illness. Apparently, she was not. This letter is official notification that you are considered sound of mind and body and may return to work at any time. Please note that you should discontinue any medication that you have been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time that you are suffering a relapse, then please make contact with your local physician immediately. We wish you continued good health, Dr. Spencer. I don't think she's going to. She very clearly did not respond well to treatment, Doc. There he is at school. Read letter. Lorraine. I received your letter and am quite surprised. You ran off with your father all of those years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map, and then when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters. And now you write to me asking me for help. I have another family now and another life. Your father was a horrible man, and I regret the years that I wasted with him. I loved you. I truly did. But every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl, never really mine. Still, I would have fought for custody if you hadn't run away with him broke my heart, but I needed to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Larry, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day it'll be easier and I can meet Caleb, but not yet. I am not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact me again, Karen. Sounds like a thing a Karen would say. Salmon toy. What kind of toy is this? How do you, how do you play with that? Miss Maylard, mm -hmm. our inquiry into the estate of Mr. Donald Williams has been completed. We regret to inform you that the primary beneficiaries of his estate, including the life insurance settlement for accidental death, were listed as Rose Williams and Richard Williams of New York State, the deceased parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explained your situation, especially as regards the birth of Donald's son, Calum. Unfortunately, they were not receptive to our overtures, and they specified that without any legal proof of a biological relationship, they consider you ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. They have asked that we no longer contact them regarding this matter. I understand that this may have a negative impact on our current financial situation. I hope that I'm not being too forward when I enclose the bill for our services with this letter. So everyone's just been a dick to Lorraine. Okay. So Lorraine desperately tried to get help and just nobody would really help her. Poor Lorraine and poor Kayla. Ah, good PT eating this shit. Okay. You called yourself daddy, don't try. You're not scary, you're just mildly annoying at best. Okay, here's Nightmare Circus again. The park, it was a wait, wait, waitin' on a child for take, take, taken, using joy for bait, bait, baitin' while their mother's mind is breakin'. And Algesia win. Okay. Flags Pharmacy again. Zolift instead of Zoloft, sure. Oh, 
Lorraine, things aren't right between us at the moment, I know. I want to try and explain it. I think it is because I am so far from home and I am working so hard. Every day working at the park, it gets worse. Like a spring inside my mind, winding tighter and tighter and tighter. When we go for drinks after work, it gets a little better. The guys relax and we laugh and we're, we're good people again. I don't want to come home to you without being in my right mind. But when this job is done, we need to get out of this place. We need to go back to the city where I don't feel like this anymore. I love you, Donald. Yes, I was thinking about names for boys and girls. I like Callum for a boy and Emma if it is a girl. Huh. We'll meet an Emma later. It's very interesting. So the park was clearly messing with Donald. And it was messing with Lorraine. It's messing with Lorraine now, honestly. But it was messing with Lorraine. It messed with Caleb. Where's the disconnect notice? So I don't really buy his, uh, the boogeyman's Lorraine. You were always alone. I don't think so. The story of Hollow Dormer. What? The true story of, oh. Oh, the Hollow Dormer. Okay, yup. In the spring of 1933 in the Soviet Ukraine, an entire population found themselves without food. True. Over the course of the coming months, the situation grew critical and reports of mass malnutrition began to filter into the upper echelons of the government. The people had been left with very little to bite or sup. It was to become one of the greatest tragedies of mass starvation that the world has ever seen. Yup. Now, our panel of Soviet experts have uncovered compelling evidence that the families were forced to resort to cannibalism in order to survive that terrible winter. In this never-before-seen expose, read about how the starving parents cooked and ate their own children in order to survive. All here in the pages of this shocking true story. Okay, so we're getting a lot more into the cannibalism theme. What is that? Hey, remember that sound from the police car? We'll be hearing that again. Wilting. No, wait, come back. Come back. With this novel, Lorraine submits her place as one of the most important science fiction writers of a generation. A solar flare struck the earth. Millions of people are uprooted from their homes. A young meteorologist searches desperately for a way to stop global overheating, and exotic dancer named Lorraine is the key to saving the world again. Okay. They are trying so hard to talk to her right now. There's more Zoloft. What are we- what are we- <gasps> Caleb! Caleb, give mommy just a second. We gotta look at things. If we don't look at things, it- I might literally die. Uh... That's a bunch of- I'm gonna leave these. I don't know what this is trying to say. I'm sure someone smarter than me has figured this out. Okay. Can we look at that again? We cannot look at that again. Alright, let's go see Caleb. Okay. Oh, for the love of God, child. Take the pills, follow up with Dr. Spencer, organize babysitter for Caleb. Okay, so again, we see her desperately trying. A. Caleb, honey, I need you to quit being a little shit. Nope. Mmm. Okay. That's more alcohol than it was before. It's fine, though. We're fine. Everything's fine. Just gotta PT our way through it. Nice poltergeist reference. I didn't run away. Dad took me. Okay, so she was kidnapped by her father. 
Thank you, William. The new watch, it is very nice. It has made me a, hap a happy carrot. What? No, come back. Lorraine seems to be suffering from depression that began early in her pregnancy. Our discussions have made it obvious that these episodes stem from the grief of losing her partner, Dawn, who died about six months ago. There is also several unresolved issues with her father. After being kept under watchful observation, we provided standard treatment for the disorder, including electroconvulsion therapy. The patient responded and made her up, but no, she did not. No, she did not. She did not respond to shit. Okay. There's Stapleton again. And we're looping again. What has changed this time? Don't start with me. Don't start with me. Shut the hell up. Okay, let's see what's changed. A chipmunk goes a stab, stab, stabbin. In the eyes, a jab, jab, jabbin. All the townies gab, gab, gabbin. Just lay down and let it happen. Basal ganglia win. What does that have to do with it? Oh, that's fucked up. Hmm. Okay. The wilting. Okay, that's the same. That's the same. Uh, the wilting is the same as the last time. Oh, and the hat now has blood on it. Great. Oh. Her why see her try her lie bye bye her see her cry okay okay the rubik's cube is solving itself in an awful way mommy i love you is gone sadness <laughs> More pills. Tickets to Atlantic Island Park. Oh, the Zoloft prescription. Okay, this goes milk Zoloft, Zoloft prescription. Cheese Zoloft prescription. Bread Zoloft prescription. Butter Zoloft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I know that feeling. Fun fact. Once you have cancer, you kind of just have to deal with cancer all the time. Forever. For the rest of forever. I have so many pills I can relate at this moment. Oh, Caleb's crying in there. And now it's just booze. Okay. Great. She was doing okay, and now we're not doing okay. Okay, this is torn up. The letter from her mother is torn up and more messed up. History of Solomon Island. I know come back. Okay. Kingsmith Publishing. That that is creepy. I will give them that. That one is awful creepy. Read notice. What? Okay, things are just getting more and more deteriorated. Oh, we've drawn the boogeyman into the uh, attorney letter. Fantastic. And we're looping again. Let's do it. Let me, let me in, let me in, let me in. Shut the hell up, Nathaniel Winters. No one's pressed by you. I beat you like a punk ass bitch earlier. Nightmare Circus. A boogeyman goes walk, walk, walkin', sneakin', stealin', a stalk, stalk, stalkin'. Is he really a talk, talk, talkin'? Now is not the time for balkin'. Cerebral cortex win. 
Hmm. Things are getting more messed up. Now there's creepy dolls. The old hat is still bloody. See her cry, say bye bye, see her try. Something her lie, something her why. Okay. Could anyone be slightly nice to this family? Just slightly. Don't come back. We, with Can You Hear Us, Lorraine? One of the most important science fiction writers of a generation. The willing. A sun will struck the earth. Million of cattle are uprooted from their homes. A young shadow searches desperately for a way to stop global domination. And exotic dancer Listen Lorraine is the key to saving the world again. Dynamic, exciting, irrepressible. Everything we've come to expect. Answer us, Lorraine. Lorraine, we are watching. You better believe that she is bigger, better, and bolder than ever. So that's definitely the buzzing trying to talk to her, I think. Like it talks to us in the lore. That must be Dawn. My two best friends, Dawn and Laura. Didn't Laura also work at the park? Didn't we get a letter from her? Oh, fantastic. That's not real, YouTube. It is a baby doll. I think that's not water anymore. I think that's just straight up filth. That's a love prescription. Remember, you are alone. Nobody loves you. Caleb is no longer who he once was. I think the park or the island did something to her. I put my babies in and up. Oh! Oh, that door's open now. Yeah, we'll go there in a second. That's where I put my babies. Salmon drawing. Oh, there it is. It's burned. Oh. That's Chad's ice pick, isn't it? Oh, boy. Hello? Hello? No. Get away from me. Actually, no, come here. I want to hit you. Thank you. I want to hit you with this, actually. Hello? What do you want? That's what I thought. This is messed up. Okay. Now it's scribbled out. Honestly, all of these people are just victims of this fucking island, including Nathaniel Winter, even though I'm going to mock him relentlessly for the rest of my life. Time to loop again. What? 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 What do you say now? I need you to focus on what we are discussing. The chipmunk killer, Steve Gardner. He was locked away for what he did to those kids. Nathaniel Winter hasn't been seen in years, but he is nowhere near Atlantic Island Park. We've established this. You know this. Okay, so that's someone questioning her about what happened. I'm assuming to Caleb at this point. Hunger, the story. The woodcutter is dead. The witch always wins. The woodcutter is dead. The witch always wins. The woodcutter is dead. The witch always wins. All here in the pages of this broken story. The killing. A son will be devoured. Are we are talking. Can you hear us, Lorraine? 
All the cattle will be enslaved. The shadow lies on your future, our domination. If you listen, Lorraine, we are you are key to damning the world. Wait. We are irrepressible. You can only join us, Lorraine. Lorraine, we are one. Okay, that's the same. That's still bloody. See her lie, see him die. Ask her why, see her try. See her cry, say bye bye. Okay. That's definitely gotta be. Oh. Oh! That's Donnie and Laura. That's what I do. I set my babies on fire. Huh. Awful. No, thank you. Can I get in here still? No. Yeah, the black signal sounds, we know. See our way through this again. Sounds like it might be the final loop, though. Yeah. Stories are told again and again, and from their shape we build our understanding of the world. Two children are led to the woods. They are lost for a time, but then are captured by an old witch. A child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park. He wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch. In the oldest version of the story, the mother and the witch were the same person. I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? Honey, I think there's a lot more going on here than just you. I know. Kids broke in today. It has been so long since I heard laughter, so very long. I took one of them. I couldn't help myself. It was fast. The others didn't notice. I liked hearing him laugh, this boy from the academy. I put him on a slab. I tickled him until he couldn't breathe. My machines came to life, whirring in time to his gasps and shrieks. I think this is delightful. The change wrought in me by the machines is not yet complete. There must be other children I can lay on my slab. There's just so much going on here, and I don't, like, people who haven't played Secret World and don't know that a lot of this is actually very literal and really happening, um, or really did happen to Lorraine, I can definitely see how they got the, she was an abusive mother, and this is her dealing with her guilty conscience, and maybe that is part of what's happening, but honestly, this really makes me feel bad for Lorraine, for Calum, for everyone, including Nathaniel Winter, who got involved with this park. Don't you fucking jump scare me. Don't you do it. Eyes without sparkle. Oh, postpartum depression book. You better not be copyright. I also like how my flashlight's definitely not here anymore. Hansel and Gretel. Excuse me? Oh. Oh, filth tendrils. I knew it. I mean, out of the generator, but I think those are filth tendrils. Or maybe not? I don't know. Oh. Hi, Larry. Calum. Calum? 
He's on the slab. Kelp. There's Chad. Or Steve. Oh no. Lorraine, Lorraine, don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Okay, and for those of you who don't understand the last cutscene, um, that was a bee. It's not in Secret World Legends, but there used to be a Christmas mission in the Secret World where you actually encounter Lorraine again. She is... How should I put this? She is forced into being a bee, more or less, like the player character is. And we also end up being rather horrible to Lorraine, just like everyone else in this game. So with this, I will see you all in the next video. I hope you have a pleasant week, uh, hopefully a better week than Lorraine's having. Bye.